Hey, how's it going guys? Monolith here with yet another monolithic overview, and today we're taking a look at One Finger Death Punch. Now, as the name suggests, this game really is played with one finger. Uh, you have a left attack and a right attack, and that's pretty much it. Now, this game is the definition, the epitome, if you will, of easy to play, difficult to master, it has several difficulty uh, levels, and uh, it can be quite difficult and frustrating at times, but it is amazingly satisfying to uh, to do well in this game. So let's go ahead and jump in here and see what we got. There are almost like a campaign, an overworld map where you move mission to mission and straight up survival, which is exactly as it sounds. I'll show you the uh, the main overworld here. There are three different levels here. You have to beat the game on... You know, the lower difficulty to unlock the next one. Now, this is the overworld map, and if I had a complaint about the game, this is it. It is difficult to move around and look at stuff, and it's, in general, doesn't even look very good. I don't like the art that they have on here, but the art in-game and the actual missions is actually pretty good. But uh, we'll go ahead and jump in here and, and take a look at a quick mission. Let's see here, defender round. There are several different game modes. Uh, as you can see on the top, you see boss round, defender round, mob round, dagger speed round. There's all different kinds of variants, but the mob round is is kind of where the game shines. All right, we're gonna go ahead and jump in here real quick. But before I do, I want to show you the skill tree. Pretty simple. Uh, you just kind of unlock them as you go through missions and and gain uh, medals, which there are four different levels to medals. You have um, Platinum, which is not missing a single attack. Gold, which is 1 to 3. Silver is 4 to 6. And bronze is 7 to 9. If you miss more than 9 times, you don't even get a medal. And you have to, uh, you, you don't even unlock the next mission. You gotta replay it. So we will, let's see, I'm just gonna show you what I have for my general setup. Um, there, there are ranged weapons in the game where. As an enemy walks towards you, if they have that weapon, if you take them out, you get that weapon for so many uses. If you don't have these three skills here, you only get one shot with the bow, or one dagger, or one bomb. Uh, but each of them are one-hit kills. So even if, uh, and I'll show you here in just a second exactly what I'm talking about, when you're going through the level, there are different levels of enemies that... Uh, react differently to you. There are some that are just extra strong that take multiple hits. There are others where they will dodge your first attack and switch sides. So you have to switch from right attack to left attack. Uh, but equipping these three definitely helps you progress a lot quicker. Uh, like I said, even the the semi mini bosses that show up in there, where it's actually a bit of a scripted fight, um, even these will will take them out in one hit. And uh, and extra health never hurt, never hurts. So that explains the layout there, the loadout, if you will. Let's go ahead and jump in here. This is just a regular mob round. Now, as you can see, you have enemies coming from the right and the left. When they enter the gray zone there is when you actually are within range. There's the daggers. Here's one of those mini bosses. Now, I am playing with a controller. It is perfectly playable with a keyboard. I just prefer a controller. It's what I'm used to. Now, there are weapons. Like you can see there, when you pick up a weapon, it increases, that's a cool x-ray attack, it will increase your range. I don't know if you noticed or not, but on the bottom, where you see the gray bar indicating the range of your attack, when you have an item, it extends it. You can see there, on the uh, ends of the bar, there's like a little little chain, little little link going on there. Now, the regular enemies, uh, the gray enemies right here, <laughs> it does get pretty pretty frantic at times, and blew his heart out. Uh, this game is definitely an ode to the uh, kind of classic martial art films. But when you start each mission, you are given a martial arts type, uh, you know, whether it's crane or tiger or praying mantis or whatever. Uh, each mission designates the fighting style for you. Now, you can... Uh, the enemies will throw weapons at you, and you can basically, by attacking the weapon when it's within range of you, you can grab it. Uh, depending on the weapon, you'll do something different with it. There's pole arms where, uh, after you grab it, you pick a direction to throw it, and you'll throw it. It'll hit the first enemy it hits, and then come back to the other side of the screen and hit somebody else. Uh, as you see there, I got a bronze, which is awful, but, <laughs> but um, I guess it's to be expected doing this kind of thing. 
I'll tell you what, let's jump into a survival. Now, there are different kinds of survival. Uh, you unlock them by playing survival. Kind of like the difficulties, you play the easier one to unlock the difficult ones. Now, the game, when you're playing through the campaign, and even through here, when you accomplish certain things, like, you know, taking out so many enemies in a certain amount of time, stuff like that, the game will react to you and increase the speed at which they come at you based on how well you're actually playing, which is kind of interesting. It's it's a reactive and adaptive kind of uh, difficulty. Now, this ball here is the bouncing ball of doom, which I just missed because I grabbed that weapon, but um, those are a lot of fun. They are one-hit kills that uh, you actually have to punch the ball towards an enemy, and then if it hits an enemy, it will come back to you, and you can you know chain that into some pretty impressive combos and you know and generally just feeling badass being able to pull off you know a 19 kill streak with the uh, the bouncing ball of doom but uh, like I said this game is simple on the surface and extremely difficult uh, you know at, at later levels definitely easy to pick up I mean obviously easy to understand what it is you have to do you got two buttons to press it's not that complicated but being able to pull it off at higher difficulties um, in a meaningful way, too. I mean, you see all these weapons I'm grabbing out of the air there. This is a light sword round. Um, when you're doing survival, it will automatically do these little sequences for you. Uh, the, the purpose being that if you make it through these little rounds, you will, yeah, like that guy right there, the white ones, uh, you can attack them to gain health which is just like a, a little mini game basically in the middle of survival mode to kind of keep you going to give you a chance to pick up some health to be able to keep going through the actual survival part. You know, the the animations for the actual fighting styles are very well done. Uh, and you actually do feel like a martial arts master landing these hits because of the way that the uh, enemies are reacting to you and the way they get you know thrown across the map and whatnot. Well, anyway, guys, it pretty much wraps this up. I think you got a good idea for what One Finger Death Punch has to offer. It is a, a love note to classic Chinese and you know Japanese martial art films from back in the day. Uh, you know, all the different fighting styles are exactly as you would expect and would hope if you're a fan of martial arts. Anyway, guys, my name is Monolith. That's been another Monolithic Overview. And as always, have a nice one. Take care.